do you remember something? Do you write it down on a piece of paper or maybe on your hand or put it into your phone? Do you tie a string around your finger or maybe move your wedding band from this hand to this hand? Or maybe you create a mnemonic device. So to remember the line notes of the staff, I remember learning empty garbage before dad flips. E, G, <laughs> B, D, F. <laughs> Did you learn a different one? <laughs> or to, to remember the colors of the rainbow. Roy, G, Biv. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Or maybe you remember something by just repeating it over and over again to yourself. 867-5309, Well, when I was in seventh grade, I had to memorize the Gettysburg Address. Anyone else have to go through that horrible experience? <laughs> so it was about this time of year, Memorial Day, and I worked very hard on it and thought I had it down. So I thought, until I got in front of Mr. Dottillo's social studies class. And I had part of it really well. I said, four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth upon this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth upon this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Four score and seven years ago. <laughs> Finally, Mr. Dottillo stood up and stopped this broken record <laughs> and graciously ended my embarrassment. You see, I had learned, memorized the words, or at least some of them, but I had no idea what I was saying. I had no idea what the words meant. So in the gospel lesson for today, we have Jesus, who, remember, has died and been raised from the dead, and now he's appeared to his disciples. And this is the last time. So they've just had breakfast. Remember the fish, the miraculous catch, how many? 153, right. Grace is in the details. So not that they ate that many. They ate some fish and bread. And then Jesus realized that his time was coming. Next Sunday, we're going to celebrate the ascension, which means Jesus is going up to heaven. And he's not going to be here anymore with his disciples on earth. So he has one last chance to say, this is what I need you to remember. And so he pulls Simon Peter aside. Now remember, Peter's the one who denied Jesus. Not once, not twice, but three times. And so Jesus teaches Peter this lesson, not once, not twice, but three times. Simon, son of John, you love me more than these. Simon Peter says, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He says, feed my lambs. A second time he asked, Simon, do you love me? Simon Peter says, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Tend my sheep. A third time, Jesus asked, Simon, do you love me? Simon Peter was hurt because Jesus had asked him a third time. And he said, yes, Lord, you know everything, and you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Now, why would Jesus repeat the lesson three times? Jesus was trying to underscore, emphasize, remind Peter that his words of love had to be matched with a life of love. He wanted Peter to show him in how he lived, not just repeating over and over again, Jesus, I love you. He wanted to see him live out his faith. Well, I managed to basically put that Gettysburg Address experience behind me and not think about it for years and years. But just recently I thought, maybe I'll go back and revisit that. After all, it's Memorial Day weekend, right? And so what I realized is in memorizing it, the first part I got stuck on, I never got to the last part. 
which was actually the most important part. It is for us, the living, here to be dedicated to the unfinished work that these who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us, the living, to be dedicated to the unfinished task that lies, behind, that lies before us, that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, and that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. The words have more meaning now. And so over 150 years later, after these words were penned and delivered, on this Memorial Day, we still honor and celebrate and remember those brave men and women who gave their life for a noble cause of our freedom and security. And so that they shall not have died in vain, we dedicate ourselves to the unfinished work of praying for and working for freedom and peace in our land. So I think that's what Jesus was trying to do with his disciples. He was trying to say, I am reminding you of what is really important. And that the life of discipleship, I gave my life, he said, so that you might live. But it's a life of discipleship, and it's not easy. It requires sacrifice. It requires you to give of yourself so that others can live. For you to feed and tend the least and the last and the lost. So that Jesus shall not have died in vain. In all the churches I've served, this one and every other one, there are moments that I get to witness people being faithful disciples of Jesus Christ, of loving one another, of putting their faith in action, holding fast to hope, of caring and feeding and taking care of one another and those in need and changing the world, or at least their little corner of it, for good. And in those moments, I give thanks to God. Because there's also other moments <laughs> where people fight about whether the carpet should be green or red, whether we should have donuts or donut holes at fellowship hour, and whether for communion we should have wafers or bread. And people yell at each other because I saw it different than you saw it. Or the moments that someone quits the choir because they didn't get the solo that they thought they deserved. Or those moments when people draw a line beyond which those people shall not go. And it's in those moments that I say to myself, and sometimes aloud, and Jesus died for this? Friends, Jesus died for us and for our salvation so that we might live as his disciples. Jesus died not just to fulfill his mission, but he wholeheartedly believed that we could carry on his unfinished work. In fact, he bet his life on it. And so let us Promise one another that in our work and in our worship, in our faith and in our fellowship, in our education and our mission and our outreach, in feeding and tending others, in things great and small, that Jesus shall not have died in vain. And let us work together to help make our prayer come true. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Let it be so. Amen and amen.